Three, two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting film journey here on I Inside Movies Galore. I am one of your hosts, but today we are uh, going on a, a, a new uh, themed month, which I believe is, uh, is uh, according to Jake, ancient April? Antique April. Antique. Ancient April would have been even more of a misnomer. But... <laughs> right. <laughs> it wouldn't have been 50 yep. years or yep. so. But, um, yeah. So, um, uh, was it last week we started in on this, uh, this Antique April? Indeed. We kicked off with a film from the 70s. So this year, you at least took us back into the 60s. So that's a good thing. Yeah, so uh, I chose a 1966 film that was thought to have been lost for over 30 years uh, in 1999, because uh, 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 1999 2000 is when, uh, when they de uh, uh, they decided to release it on a DVD of some sort. Um, but um, it stars. Let's see. Uh, uh, let me Don't look up the title. <laughs> it is called Incubus. Um, it is directed by Leslie Stevens, which if any of you know anything about Leslie Stevens, he eventually went on to, uh, to create the show The Outer Limits. Ooh. Which um, had, it had three seasons in, in shortly after this, and William Shatner, who also stars uh, stars or is titled in this film, um, he also was in two episodes of The Outer Limits as well. Um, uh, now, Outer Limits did have a reboot that lasted seven seasons in the nineties, uh, 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 but it does not have as long of a track record as The Twilight Zone, which was another anthology-like TV series from its era. So, um, that being said, um, let's see who else is in. Let's do. Uh, let's bring up uh, IMDb here. Oh, IMDb has a six point one out of ten rating. That's interesting. Um, because that's a little bit over halfway. Um, so this is what IMDb says about the film. On a strange island inhabited by demons and spirits, a man battles the forces of evil. It's cryptic. <laughs> uh, but <coughs> we have William Shatner playing the role of Mark. Uh, Al Al Allison Ames playing the role of Kaya. Uh, Eloise Hart playing the role of Amiel. Uh, Robert Fortier playing the role of Olin, uh, and I will mention one more, Anne Atmar uh, playing Arndis uh, in this in this feature. But uh, oh, let us go around to our our, our different uh, podcast members and see what they think of the film. Uh, oh, there is one thing I wanted to mention before we go into that. This film was. Done entirely in Esperanza, uh, <laughs> which was supposedly a universal language that was supposed to be the second language internationally. Um, yeah. If I remember cor uh, correctly, it means something about hope. Um, Espera uh, uh, let's see. Uh, one who hopes. That's what Esperanto translates into. Mm. So, if you wanted to know. So, um, Jake, uh, was this a first time watch for you? And notably, this was the second and apparently last film entire filmed in Esperanto. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird because it was supposedly a right. all time universal language, but. Only yeah. two films ever, ever were done in that way. <laughs> and badly at that, supposedly. But anyway, I, I can't claim to be expert in Esperanto. But uh, 
It, it, yes, this was definitely a first time watch. To be honest, I'm not. I can't swear to it that I'd ever heard of this movie before. I might have in passing, but <clears throat> if I had, it definitely didn't end up on my radar. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, if I had heard that William Shatner had made a movie in a foreign language just before he did Star Trek, I think I would have been <clears throat> very interested in seeing that out of sheer curiosity. Um, in all honesty... I think he spoke I, eloquently, to be honest. Yeah. I, I was going to say, in all honesty, I had a lot of trouble getting through this movie. Okay. It was just boring. Uh, <laughs> it had its moments. Um but the amusement value was much lower than I anticipated, and it it just didn't grab me. Um, and mercifully, it's a short movie. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, it definitely has some historic interest. It's I think it's worth watching for the historic interest, uh, not to mention there there is a lot of interesting... Again, this is one where what is actually on screen might be one of the least interesting parts. Um, we already talked about the Esperanto connection. Uh, the the actor who played Incubus, uh, Milo Milo, apparently was charged with murder during the film's before the film would have been released. And it's one of the reasons why it didn't really get a full release. Um, and then Anne Atmar, who played Arndis, uh, I think committed suicide that same year. So, okay. and then I think someone else met with foul play later. So, there... Well, uh, this movie could be cursed. Well, there is a story. I don't know if you came across this. They claimed that when they were filming it, they came across a hippie who they got mad at him, he got mad at them, and he cursed them all. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe it was the victim of a hippie's curse. I don't know. But um, so like I said, the story behind it's almost more interesting than the movie. But you know, I'm glad I saw it. It's always nice to see old Bill's work. Uh <laughs> well. And, you uh, came yeah. across a, a an ancient uh, by by having us do uh, antique April. Yeah, I had this one up my sleeve, and I've been okay. wanting to discuss and cover this one for a while. So Good I'm deal. glad that I was able to get a chance to show you, since uh, you are one of the more artistic flavored uh, film enthusiasts <laughs> that I know. Uh, and uh, a movie that I thought was boring um, was not boring to you, and yet this movie was. So, it, <laughs> I like French I films, remember. pretentious, boring French films. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, is that uh, pretty much your first impressions of this film? Then? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I said, it didn't leave a, a tremendous impression. I will say, in fairness, I watched the version on YouTube, and it's quite possible that there is a cleaner version out there that might be easier to watch. Not but yet. You, you, um, I think what you saw on YouTube is what is on the DVD. So. I was going to say you uh, you alluded to the fact I would, that this was I a would film. love yeah. I would love for the Criterion yeah. to get a copy of this. And it, we, uh, it, this would be a great opportunity for the tinfoil collection. <laughs> you know, though, I'm not so sure about Criterion, but I could definitely see Arrow or even Vinegar Syndrome going after this one and trying to do something with it. That's that a possibility. Be, Vinegar Syndrome. That'd be fun. Is there, there is a little bit of side boob. <laughs> uh, boob, uh, boob flapping going on at one oh. point, and yet there is... Uh, and yet in the next scene, which I'm sure yeah. we'll get to, uh, she's fully clothed and fully clothed being carried by people. 
Apparently, the producer inserted full boob into the product. He uh, he he looked at it and said, "There's not enough nudity." So he he had some film shot, uh, some scene shot. And I guess, but then they couldn't figure out how to market that version of the film. And I, that must be one of the lost versions, unfortunately. I'm sure those scenes no longer exist, but. Well, maybe they do. And maybe Vinegar nice. Syndrome will yes. uh, t- take the initiative and find yeah. it. <laughs> and it is worth noting, we were just making fun of French films and everything. But from what I understand, this movie exists because of French film snobs because it was a French print that was finally discovered and turned into a DVD. And the DVD has English as well as French subtitles. Yeah. So that uh, that would make sense. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, Tammy, was this a first-time watch for you? Yes, I believe so. Um, I found some parts interesting, but... I thought the movie itself was very slow, so it was all, it, it was hard to stay focused and interested because it was so slow. But um, you know, how do I put it? Um, when it did kick up and things were happening, it was okay. You know. I see that, I see that, you know, and, and, and it, it, you got into this, then you got back into the storyline or what was actually going on, but then there was, there would be like that lull, you know, then it went slow, <laughs> and then it was a matter of trying to get back into it again once once things would start happening. Um other than it being so slow, I don't think it was bad um, or anything like that. Um, I'm not a big fan of reading movies, <laughs> but it actually wasn't too bad on this one. Well, yeah, because it was in big, bold print number one. And uh, I know if they ever do another co- uh, copy eventually, that black shading that, uh, uh, that was behind the subtitles uh, it definitely has to go because that's blocking some of the uh, main characters or whatnot when they're speaking, you know. Correct. I mean, but I do have to get a credit that they, it, it seemed to keep up well with what was going on when things were going on. Not that you that this person was talking and that person and then and then the stuff words finally kicked in or this you know what i mean so in that sense it was it was easy that was easy to follow it was easy to follow um you know that so so i do have to give it credit for that it could have it just could have been the format that they used could have been a little bit better instead of having that black behind the letters like that. Okay. But, well, yeah, it was it was interesting. Um, it just could have picked up the pace a little bit more. Yeah, the the pacing had a lot to do uh, to do with uh, why it was hard for me to get into it the first time. I watched it, and I I swear we, uh, when I picked this up at Half Price Books, and I was giddy at finding it, for uh, first of all, because I had never heard of it myself, like 10 or, fi- uh, 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 10 or 12 years ago when I found it. <laughs> so, uh, um, but um, it, um, I definitely wasn't as used to reading subtitles then as I am now. So um, uh, that uh, that is something, and at least I was able to uh, understand what what, uh, what was going on and how the plot uh, went. So uh, let's go into the plot a little bit. So apparently, there is a group of succubus that are um, wandering the earth. Uh, in a sense, you could almost call them reapers, except they're not, because uh, 
uh, the succubus uh, 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 kind of follows the mermaid sense of uh, sensibility of tails, uh, yeah. bringing them to the sea. Um, a little bit, yeah. Uh, that's why I, I say mermaid because mer mermaids, sirens, they uh, they kind of call everyone to the sea, you know, and uh, that's how they kill them and what uh, whatnot. And uh, that's what we get in the very beginning of this film. She finds a drunkard uh, and convinces uh, him that she'll frolic naked with him so that he will follow her to the sea and she steps on his head and drowns him. And then uh, we see her burying him uh, uh, in the sand. Fro so, uh, frolicking naked is good. <laughs> well, I, 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 I said I out loud, yeah, promising nakedness, that will definitely uh, uh, make him walk, even right. though he cannot. <laughs> well, he seemed more than a little bit inebriated and probably easily convinced. <laughs> but yeah. Of course, if she was a proper succubus, he could have been high on something else, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. It could uh, it could have been, have been another uh th a thing, but yeah. the tankard was enough to have him inebriated enough to yeah. follow the leader. And I think you're right, like um <laughs> Even though they called them succubi in here, uh, it was interesting the way they had it set up was they were more they were a sisterhood, almost like a sisterhood of nuns. Correct for the other side. They were and, <laughs> dressed up like nuns, too. right? Which was an interesting idea that probably pissed off a lot of people, uh, or would have if the movie had been more widely seen. I um, would. Have Say they were uh, they were succubus cult of Satan. In, in <clears throat> you could yes, um, but, but there is an element. Uh, you're right. Like there's a long tradition that does include succubi, but it definitely includes uh, merfolk. It definitely includes sirens. It includes Yukiona. A long tradition of <clears throat> of creatures that sometimes are portrayed as demons, sometimes not, but they're often portrayed as luring people to their deaths. Correct. Uh, but and, it is interesting. Uh, I get a sense that that they are referring to themselves as versions of demons. Right. Because they do mention demons. It's interesting that they here they're not just trying to lure them to their deaths, they also want to make sure that they are corrupted uh, beforehand um, because they're not just luring them to death. They're luring them to damnation. Correct. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of an interesting, I mean, again, I thought the overall concept was interesting. Just the execution was a little, yeah. That's correct. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Um, I, I know that there was a, um, I was uh, looking up some of the the critiques on this movie, and I guess one of the th things that this movie was too artistic, uh, or something like that, uh, at one point in time. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, um, so Kaya, as we learn uh, this succubus's name, um, she has ideas of her own uh, that. She wants to, uh, she's ambitious, I think, and she wants to, uh, let indeed the Lord of Darkness or, uh, oh, oh, I'm trying to th uh, think what the, the God of Darkness, you they, uh, well, I think they, what did they call him? They, I, I want to say Prince of Darkness, but that doesn't sound. They that didn't that call, uh, 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 call him Prince of Darkness. They called him God of Darkness. Yeah, it was something which else. Was, which was a little... Uh, they also called yeah. him Lord of the Night. Yeah. Later on. Um, one thing... You're right. She's very ambitious. Um, you could almost say that she, you know, to, uh, <clears throat> to put it one way, she's kind of sick of... Uh, Squishing the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> she wants to uh, reach higher. 
all the ones that uh, that uh, uh, that they seem to be gathering the souls of are as wicked as can be uh, and right. whatnot. She wants to turn wants a man a that is truthfully good uh, over to the dark side. I don't know why um, she went after William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well granted, he, granted, he had not yet uh, learned the pleasures of alien women at this point. So, <laughs> no, he had not. He had not quite turned green with envy or <laughs> anything like that. But um, he uh, most assuredly uh, portrays himself as an honest man. In fact, uh, from what I understand, he's a war hero of sorts it looks like he has um has a limp uh as if uh from uh le like some kind of war and sh uh kaya is uh, warned uh by the other succubi uh or succubus uh to you know abstain from uh trying to turn uh, uh, any kind of a good person over to the dark side because of that powerful thing, love. You know, that idea of love conquers all, you know. Uh, that, is, that is a powerful human emotion. And, and uh, love does conquer de de death. And uh, one of the th things that, uh, that the succubus also continues to tell her is that not only is he a good man, he has faced death. Uh, and, you know, anyone, uh, anyone, he actually brought back some people fr uh, 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 from death. Um, so, uh, so he is considered to be an honest and good man, you know, uh, uh, in a sense, you know, one of the untouchables. One uh, one of the uh, ones that uh, that uh, that apparently succubus, for the most part, cannot touch. You know, it's almost like the forbidden fruit. Um, and that's this kind of sense that I'm get, uh, getting. Does anybody else see, uh, seem to get that sense that that's what's going on here? Yeah, kind of. If they're good, they're forbidden because love is more powerful, and if you fall in love with them. Then the you know then you won't have any control over all type of thing you know. Correct that and uh, um, de death could lose control over uh, over you as a succubus you know. Um, you're you could, uh, in a sense, gain back your soul. <laughs> so um, that's why it, it, it's like this walks a fine line with like grim reaperness. A little bit because they talk about taking souls um a lot in here um but uh she is kaya is uh not only ambitious uh she doesn't listen so uh, i believe that she goes to uh to search search out and seek um humans and she comes uh, uh, she comes across uh, Marco and his sister. Um, what's her name? Arns. Let's see. I think it was Arnett. Uh, it was. Arntis. Arn Arntis. 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 Arntis was played by Anne Atmar. And it is said in the beginning about this, uh, uh, there's this ancient deer well that apparently has um, uh, uh, magical powers or healing powers, healing powers. So I, I believe that they are th uh, there to possibly, uh, possibly uh, Maybe it maybe help heal what, whatever uh, whatever ailment uh, Marco is in fact feeling, and I guess 
it seems it seemed to me like uh, like uh they, they were hiding that they were brother and sister to others it didn't it appear that way to you guys honestly i <laughs> That may have been one of the parts I faded out. I don't remember really them interacting at, together with anyone else. Well, they were interacting with each other, and they were uh, uh, yeah. uh, saying that uh, that no one but us knows that we are brother and si uh, sister. Okay. Like that. So I was getting the feeling uh, like uh, to the general public, they were acting like they were a couple. Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> which is a little strange uh but uh, but uh, they they, uh, they may not look like brother and sister to uh, to others and that uh, that was a little strange moment too hmm. um and then of course we watched this during the total eclipse and guess what happens during this movie and there is a, a total eclipse that happens in that song <laughs> At about the same part that, uh, um, at about the same part that Kaya uh, came uh, along to, I guess where wherever they were staying, it didn't seem like it was their home, but it might be. Um, no matter what, they had bread and cheese and and what uh, what not to share with Kaya, um, and he was. Uh, he right away offered her food and offered her a place to stay, except she kept uh, say, uh, saying something about the fact that she was there to help with the harvest. Um, which is well, <laughs> yeah, harvesting the souls, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but, um, I guess um, she's uh, once she has a little bit of bread, and that eclipse happened. He has a little bit of romantic si uh, side in him because he says, "Hey, uh, you could almost say that we spent the night together." <laughs> and uh, uh, um, there was a little moment here that they liked. Hey, the cows are actually going into pasture, and. Uh, the sister was kind of like, "Well, I hope the hens don't uh, don't do anything. We need the eggs that they're going to lay, you know, things of that nature, so that the uh, uh, you know, uh, things uh, that were happening during the eclipse that was a little strange." And oh, and the bells of the church rang, rang and he was like, "Isn't that funny? How uh, how uh, how uh, there's vespers at noon, you know." <laughs> So, um, those were interesting th uh, things that were going on during the uh, during the eclipse. That were, uh, you know, as life goes on, uh, people uh, uh, people don't fully pay attention to what's going on. <laughs> but what did y'all uh, y'all think about that eclipse moment and uh, the conversation that Succubus was having with? Uh, or Kaya was having with uh, with uh, Marco. What's that? Uh, what did y'all think about? Uh, did did y'all have anything to say about the conversation that Kaya was having with Marco during this eclipse or anything? Again, I don't even remember that scene. Okay. Uh, what about you, Tammy? I'm not sure what the exact conversation was. Well, uh, she said that she was uh, uh, there for the har uh, harvest, and she said that she had uh, uh, had to get co uh, going shortly after. And uh, he's uh, 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 th uh, there was the conversation between the sister and him uh, uh, about you know the uh, various things uh, like the cows uh, uh, going in uh, into the pasture and all that jazz that I mentioned, and all that jazz. So uh, I thought it was an interesting. A moment since we were having an eclipse and there was an eclipse that was happening in the film. So uh, I, I was like, you know, this is kind of coincidence. Well, yeah, <laughs> that, that definitely was interesting. 
Um, as far as the conversation, I think that was her trying to, that was her way of trying to lure him because she was trying to say she's only here for the short time and this, you know, and she's trying yep. to make herself look wholesome and everything. Yep. And so she um, uh, starts to get up and t uh, says that she's going to go to the sea. And he, he's like, you know what? I'll at least help you get to uh, get to the road. And they uh, and they walk a little bit. A bit and that's when um, the sister ends up like looking into the sun and blinding herself. And so she's calling out Marco and uh, and. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe this was a little comical to myself, but I was saying, "Polo, Marco, Polo," <laughs> just a little bit. Um, but um, uh, uh, she ends up being blind for a little bit and trying to fi uh, find where Marco w w went, and she ends up wandering. Uh, 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 and stumbling and uh i think she runs into one of the other succubus and we'll get to that later but um marco ends up following kaya um and they have some interesting m moments here because uh, they get to a part where there's like kind of a river and He's like, I, he, he can't really move forward. Well, this water here is really short here. We can wade through it. And she keeps mentioning the sea. And and um, he's like, you you must really like the sea, don't you? And it's at this moment that uh, it goes to the beach where, where, where that body was that she buried that when the high tide ca came in, it started to uncover where it had been buried. So uh, it keeps flashing back to the uh, to that body while the, uh, they're going to the ocean or whatnot. And as they're getting closer to the ocean um, is when, uh, uh, when William, uh, 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 Marco ends up saying, you know, uh, no one's ever told you no, have they? You know, um, and and he and it's at this point that he sa says he really likes being around you and he, uh, 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 her and uh, he and he really thinks that he uh, she likes him. Why don't why doesn't she just come back and live with him? You know, um, and she's like, but I want to uh, go to the sea. Let's lie naked in the water. Um. And he's like, I really want to, but I want to do things right, and I want uh, and, and I want to do this the right way. So come back. And, and it, it's a little bit more of the, uh, the this back and for, uh, forward conversation here, uh, uh, and then I I think they end up like making love right, like right then and there, and. He carries her back, and while he's uh, he carries her ba uh, back, it, uh, I think the succubus uh, bu uh, bus that uh, that had told her no all along what uh, what uh, ha has been watching, and she comes across his sister and t uh, and sends the sister, even though she's still blind, <coughs> and. Uh, I think Marco ends up bringing her. He says he's going to bring her home, but he brings her to a church. So uh, does that, uh, 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 Jake, did you have anything about what was happening so far? Mm -hmm. Nothing particular. Okay. So they get to, uh, uh, Marco and her get to the church and she wakes <laughs> up and she sees, uh, you know, the, uh, these, these statues of, of Holy Mary, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus Christ all around. And she mm -hmm. like immediately reacts to all of it and runs out of the church. Right. And then that's when she runs into the arms of the, of the other succubus. And uh, cor according to the succubus, uh, 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 
she just assumes that uh, Marco has committed this holy rape against her and uh, and forced her into like some kind of love try uh, love tryst or something. So she tells uh, tells her to enact it revenge on him. So uh, and she uh, uh, she also says yes, you must enact revenge. Call upon the incubus, which is a creature that is from the depths of hell, and that is who they call. And uh, he ultimately uh, uh, Lee, Lee rises up. For, uh, he looks all dirty and sh uh, shit when he gets up, but he takes the form of a man, uh, which. Uh, the incubus ends up showing up at the at their ho uh, home, uh, and convinces and hypnotizes the sister to come in with him. And supposedly, what happens to her is uh, she's thrown to this co uh, cult of uh, uh, of succubus nuns who rip her clothes uh, uh, apart. And according to Wikipedia, uh, she is raped and then murdered. But we actually see her, uh, see her, uh, her fully clothed being bodily carried back to this home. And she's a little bit alive before um, uh, Marco sh uh, sh uh, shows up. Um, and before this even happens, the sister ends up finding him at the church. Um, and he's... He's all in reverie of, of, of sorts because he he's really in love with Kaya and he doesn't he's like shocked that she ran from uh, from the church and uh, and all that and um he uh, he uh, the the sister was like but but you don't even know her. And and he responds uh, uh, to that. His response to that was like, "I've known her a, th a thousand years and then some, all my life." You know, uh, uh, that, that's what he, what he kind of said. And um, so when uh, when he he is running ba uh, back to, uh, to there's something else that happened. Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, when the incubus comes from he uh, from hell, you see a bat like shape, and for uh, for a moment, I I'm thinking of a moment. Uh, 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 I'm thinking like uh, the incubus is saying, "I am Pet Man." In that, moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For a very short moment, I'm thinking that, but uh, but uh, but in any case. He, he appears, um, and uh, the, uh, there is that moment where uh, where uh, where where they capture her and uh, whatever happens. And uh, Marcos uh, or Marco, uh, when he shows up, she uh, she he, he he is definitely got his sister in his arms, and she dies within his arms. Uh, and, but he ends up having a fight with um, the Incubus. And at first, the Incubus was going to outrightly kill him. But, uh, but then the, the Succubus was like, don't, don't kill him. Make, uh, make sure he does the murdering. That way he can have murder on his hands. You know? Uh, so this kind of uh, this kind of entices him into stabbing the incubus, and I guess that you know kills him for a moment. But the, uh, but then they take a rule from a vampire, better. Uh, huh? I just say got better. Yeah, uh, uh, dead for a moment because uh, I say this because. Um, you know, he he then runs off in the direction of the bells of the church, and Kaya runs after him. And, oh, and uh, 
in between while she uh, she was running after Marco, um, the succubus gets in the way and and uh, and and tries to tell her what to do again, and she basically like tr almost strangles her uh, to uh, to uh, to almost death, and and that's when she struggled to go over to the body of the incubus, takes the the stake out of the incubus, and of course. He is alive again. So it's like they stole something from a vampire movie. Uh, yeah. Where you take the stake out of the heart, the vampire lives again. Yeah, it's not a sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was <laughs> that was interesting. You take it out, and he sits up. It's like, well, okay, <laughs> okay. I guess he's not dead. But in any case, she gets to the door of. The, uh, the church, and uh, I guess he is, uh, Marco is uh, struggling to uh, to uh, get to her. Uh, she turns around, and evidently the incubus has turned into a goat and has begun attacking her. And uh, he states that, uh, that she, is, uh, she cannot leave uh, uh, basically, she, uh, she is controlled by the god of darkness. And she uh, makes the sign of the cross, which apparently making the sign of the cross, which is something that William, uh, uh, William Shatner's character di uh, did like moments earlier, uh, does something to not only the incubus, but to that cult of nuns of incubus uh, of succubi, uh, as well because they, uh, they uh, when when he made the sign of the cross, they all shuddered. You know, it, it, evidently that that is a powerful thing in this movie, and uh, so she made the sign of the cross, uh, and sa said, "I am protected by the god of light," and then they're staring at the goat. And that's the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything that uh, that you'd like to say about the movie that uh, 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 Jake that I ha have not mentioned or that you would like to discuss about? Uh, uh, the end of the movie, I was able to pay a little closer attention to. Sometimes that happens. I'll I'll get to a point where I'll be like, okay. We got just 20 minutes left. We'll make sure. <laughs> but it also kind of did pick up a little bit. Uh, much of the ending was a little... Uh, I guess I could say a little bit... Maybe felt a bit haphazard or rushed. But... It was still fairly interesting. Um, we did get a little bit of Shatner's inimitable acting style there at the end, where he was, where the emotions were higher, and <laughs> <laughs> um, but overall, I don't know. That I have too much to add. I will say that the. Uh, Succubus, Akaya battling the incubus as goat was probably unintentionally funny, but it was actually pretty funny. <laughs> um, some of the imagery was disturbing, but mostly it was just kind of funny. <laughs> so um, yeah, some of the imagery was definitely disturbing, but uh, but there uh, there was uh, there was the mo a moment that uh, that Shatner's yeah. character Marco was stumbling to the church, and yeah. um, they got the atmosphere down right, at least towards the end there. I think for the most part, yeah. What about you, Tammy? What did you think about? That whole thing. Oh, with the fighting in the goat. Fighting the goat a little bit before, and uh, and the uh, whole uh, 
uh, Incubus following Kaya full nine yards. Oh. Um, well, um, the following is, you know, I don't really know what to say about that, but when, you know, when she made the sign at the church and said that, you know, they, um, She's on the on that side, I think she said, or on the good side, and that's when that's like when the goat appeared, and it was just like I wasn't ex. I thought that Incubus was gonna come after her, as as as, as he was. <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to turn into this goat like thing and come after her, you know. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, the whole fight with that, with the goat, was maybe, was maybe a little bit longer than it really needed to be, too, you know? It seemed to me like, you know, like they were trying to uh, portray the goat as trying to, like, rape her or something like that. Uh, oh, absolutely. That um, as if she was, like, a pure... A thing, and it was trying to express that she was its property or whatnot, you know. Yeah, uh, I got that too. But um, they, they, you know, her her clothes got ripped, but never to the point of coming off or anything. So, um, and Shatner definitely um played the part of. You know, I can't like like I can't move another inch type of thing. You know, I just can't. <laughs> well, in a sense, the, uh, they almost both <laughs> both became anything, martyrs. But... In a sense, in the end, uh, you got a sense that oh, well, this wasn't a happy ending entirely, because Marco was on his way to dying. You know. So, uh, either you, either you thought like they survived it, um, and were Christians at the end of it all and saved, or did Marco in fact die? And, uh, so did she, uh, you know, it kind of left it up to the imagination. I think you missed the third option, which seems to me most likely, which is that they did die, but were saved. Okay. You that, know? Could, that could possibly be another one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They definitely gave, I think it's very clear from the way the ending is set up that they were quote unquote saved and that that made it a happy ending of sorts. Uh, but yeah, whether they survived, eh, probably not. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't really think they did. I didn't really think there was any chance of him walking away from it. No, or not him. Maybe a little. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah. they defeated the forces of evil, supposedly, so that's probably what matters. Yeah. Yep. So at the end of all things... Uh, we're at the conclusion of the movie, which it is pretty straightforward uh, without the pacing. I mean, it has tremendous pacing issues. That's for certain. <laughs> it, it could put one to sleep. Uh, that's for certain. Uh, as far as pr the, uh, the production goes, I do think that, um... Uh, th uh, uh, that Leslie Stevens was definitely uh, a, uh, a student of uh, surrealism and uh, also um, expressionism, uh, to say the least, using shadows in, in certain areas of the film. I, I do not claim this to be a masterpiece of any kind but um i do think the storyline is cool uh to a certain extent 
myself. Um, as far as production goes, it was a little staccato. Um, and being that it was uh, almost for, uh, you know, almost an entirely lost film until someone found a copy of it. I don't think at the time they, uh, they were looking to ha have it viewed at any given point in time, <laughs> uh, to say the least, to be totally criti uh, criticized or, or I don't know. It sounds like there was a lot going on behind the scenes, uh, according to you, Jake. Um, and, uh, maybe there was a reason why it wasn't seen for God knows how long, <laughs> but, maybe. um, that being said, what did you think about the, uh, production of this film, Jake? Well, yeah, well, and also what you were saying, the, um, I'm pretty sure with the controversy around first the actor who was charged with murder and then the uh, actress that committed suicide, it did put the studio in a bit of a dilemma on how the hell do we market this film? You know, uh, some some, uh, and I think it was quietly put to sleep here in this country. Although I guess it got a French release, and that's probably why it, you know. Um, but as far as the production goes, I feel like it was um, well, uh, I think it was a pretty decent from a production value standpoint, given the time period at least. Uh, they certainly could have gone in a lot more. But and again, the print I saw, it uh, it wasn't a high quality print, okay. so it's hard to say. But it feels like they did a fair job, if not even a good job, of capturing sort of a creepy, moody, atmospheric vibe for the movie, which fit the story. Um. Uh, what was that? <laughs> okay, so apparently principal photography took place over 18 days yeah. in 1965. And yeah. I, I thought that he went on to do The Outer Limits after this. It was, This was actually after The right. Outer Limits had actually been, uh, been, uh, been filmed. Right. And evidently the, sh uh, sh uh, the shooting of the film took place at Big Sur Beach and at the Mission San Antonio de Padua near Fort Hunter Lidget in Monterey County. Uh, and they were concerned that the authorities would not grant permission to shoot a horror film in these places, especially the mission. So Stevens concocted a cover story that the film was actually called Religious Leaders of Old Monterey and showed the script in Esperanto, but with stage directions and descriptions about monks and farmers. <laughs> Very sneaky. <laughs> so, <coughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, in, uh, this film was considered to be lost for many years. Uh, uh, so, when, and when producer Anthony Taylor attempted to prepare Incubus for home video release in 1993. He was told by the company that stored the negative film elements and prints that all were missing and presumed to have been destroyed in a fire. It was three years later a print was discovered in the permanent collection of Cinematic Francaise in of the Cinematic Francaise in Paris. I don't know what that is. Uh, not only was that print in poor condition, it had French subtitles. A new master was created by frame-by-frame frame optical printing, and English subtitles were superimposed over the French ones. The Sci-Fi Channel funded the restoration of that print. And a home dip video release uh, DVD was released in 2001. So uh, on February 14, 2023, Cine Savant reported that a new 35 millimeter print 
with excellent I image quality has been located. Which is interesting. So I guess that was just recently. <laughs> uh, but um, did you have anything else to add about the uh, production, Jake, before I moved over to Tammy? No, not really. Okay. What about you, Tammy? What did you think about the production and all that? I thought it was decent. You know, it was pretty straightforward. You know, there wasn't, this wasn't, it's an older film, so, you know, there's no none of the CGI stuff or whatever, you know. It was, they had what they had to make the scenes and, you know, um, which there was some nice, there was definitely some nice scenery with the, the sea and the, um, the woods and everything. And um, I think they did a pretty decent job. They all got the idea of what was going on in the film across pretty much. The only thing I had to say about the whole thing was, you know, could have um, could have sped it up a little bit, you know. But other than that, it was just decent. Okay. Um, what did y'all think about the uh, music of uh, of the film? Did uh, did any of you even notice it? Honestly, I barely remember. Okay, well, the music was done by Dominique Frontier, which I guess he's been part of the music department of um, uh, 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 of Color of Night. He was um, a composer of a movie called The Stuntman. He was, uh, was uh, uh, he did something on the uh, on the soundtrack of Contact from 1997. Looks like he was a conductor behind Cleopatra Jones and the Casino of Gold um, back in the 70s. Uh, the Gumball Rally, Pipe Dreams. He was a composer of some of the stock music. <clears throat> of Serpico, and he was also a composer of some of the stock music of Kingdom of the Spiders, another William Shatner movie. <laughs> uh, but he was a composer of the Invaders theme from the 60s, so that was uh, definite, uh, uh, definitely something cool, which was after doing Incubus. Uh, evidently, he was a composer of the stock music behind Namu the Killer Whale, uh, and two episodes of The Outer Limits. Uh, let's see, going backwards, uh, seeing uh, seeing where, where he first started. Okay, he 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 was a music arranger for the movie High Noon, Niagara River of No Return. Which Niagara and River of No Return and Many Rivers to Cross, those three, I remember being uh, having starred Marilyn Monroe, if, uh, if I'm pretty sure about those. So, uh, yeah, um, definitely started. Oh, he was a musician that was uncredited in Around the World in 80 Days. And I guess he was. A musician on the accordion in the movie The Brothers Karamazov. So, uh, but everything else uh, is up for grabs. Did we want to go into favorite characters and our favorite scene? Tammy, what? Uh, uh, who was your favorite character and, or characters, and what was your favorite scene? Well, um. This one's kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, I guess just because I do like William Shatner, he is my favorite character. 
but um, I don't really have a favorite scene. There's nothing that really really stands out on this one. I'm sorry. It just okay. Totally understandable. Uh, Jake, uh, favorite character and or favorite scene, if there was one. Uh, the sister was Arndis, right? Uh, the sister was Arndis, yes. I think she might be marginally my favorite, but that's relatively faint praise for this one. I mean, Marco was, was an okay lead. Kyle had some interest, but overall, I don't have any character that really leads the pack. Our, um, favorite scenes. Again, I don't know that there's one that leads the pack. Maybe the scene where Kaya is laying it all out and showing her what she really is aspiring to, or maybe... Oh, yeah, because as she is really uh, gung-ho about uh, uh, trying to turn a good, a, good, a good guy into a bad guy. You and know? again, later on, once we get to see... William Shatner trying to be more than just the stoic good guy, but actually trying to do a little bit of uh, varied acting. Uh, there's just enough of the, uh, what we might call the classic Shatner cadence to make it amusing, so we'll, we'll, we'll say that. But again, nothing really jumps to the front of the pack for me. Hmm. Alrighty, well, my favorite character is uh, Marco. Uh, partially because I do think he cuts a romantic uh, jib about him. Um, I, I, I mean, it, he even puts a little bit of humor a little bit uh, uh, due to the uh, total eclipse of night th that they have. And he's like, it's almost like we spent the night together, you know? Um, so I, 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 I kind of got that vibe that he was, uh, 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 and he was trying to be a little bit romantic, although they were trying to do a love at first sight type of th uh, 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 thing going on between him and Kaya. And uh, I'm not sure I to uh, totally entirely uh, get behind love at first sight as a thing, um, per se. Um, but uh, that being said, um, it was interesting, uh, to say the least. Favorite scene... I like the Incubus's I Am Batman moment. Uh, for some reason, the go uh, him turning into a goat kind of amused me. Um, as far as... Oh, uh, and the fact that uh, the one succubus pulled the stake out of his uh, 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 body and he rose like a vampire. Um, or one of the undead. Uh, except they, uh, they, I, I, I fully believe that they, uh, they stole that from like Hammer Horror or something like that, you know. Steak from the heart, he's fully alive still, you know. I fully believe that they should have, uh, he should have stabbed him and cut off his head or something like that. <laughs> but uh, it would be in, it will be interesting, um, to say the least. Uh, what becomes of this 35 millimeter print that they've so, uh, uh, somehow um, found? Cinema Savant, whatever that place is. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> but um, this is the age of 
finding th things and remastering them. So I'm I'm hoping that someone gives some good treatment to it, and uh, and we'll maybe we'll see a a more surviving print, you know, come to let's come to light. But in any case, um, let us. Uh, I believe that is the end of our discussion. So. Um, those of you who have not seen the film, go and find it. I mean, it is an interesting, uh, interesting piece of film. If you like slow films, it is definitely up your alley. If you like unique, uh, it's worth at least a watch. Um, it's interesting what they steal from, uh, from, uh, from which culture. And I think uh, I, I, I'm 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 glad that I have it in my collection. I'm glad that I've I finally watched it to a point where I can understand it <laughs> to a certain extent. Because the first time around, I was like, eh. you know, because uh, you know, it was hard for me to re uh, read a, fi uh, a film and then understand uh, understand what was go uh, going on at, at the same time uh, and when the first time around. So the, the second time around, I liked it a little bit more. I know it's slow, but for, there's something about it that I actually like. I know you guys found it a drag, but <laughs> <laughs> to each their own. Um uh let us know down in the comments what you thought of our discussion what you thought of the film and whether you think we were right or wrong and uh we'll continue to br uh, uh, bring more uh, more uh more films to light uh as we go forward in this year so uh like share and subscribe and let's tell them a little bit about ourselves so jake why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do well, I am Kodabuki Tank. I am the sometime co-host of the YouTube channel Septum Sim vs. the World. Uh, I know Septum couldn't be with us tonight, but I'm sure he would have had a, a, not much more to say about the movie, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, um, I mostly keep busy. Uh, with my main job, which keeps me, like I said, pretty busy most of the time, um, and lately trying to move, that's oof, another big chunk of time. But I do try to find time to watch some movies. The, uh, our Versus Awards are coming up in, well, a few months, but the end of the nominations is in a couple of months. So I've been working lately on trying to get some 2023 films knocked out, and it's been a lot of time for that. But I still managed to 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 knock out a film each week for this group, and uh, you know I'm glad this week's was a short film. But <laughs> I'm glad it was a short discussion. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and I yeah. I wasn't sure because uh, yeah, sometimes uh, they grant long discussions, but this one. It's yeah, really straightforward. I have a feeling, even though and, and next week is is um, Tammy's pick, right? Yeah, I believe so. So even though that's one we've discussed before, it's a film that has a lot to discuss. So they might have a pretty good one for that. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, and I wish I could have contributed more this time. I just like said my first impression didn't leave a whole lot. Uh, but one day. Um, one day I'll probably give it another go. Uh, but, yeah, um, I guess that's really all I had this go around. Uh, glad I had a chance to look at this one. And I look forward to Antique April actually getting into some actual antiques because this, this one was almost 60 years old. <laughs> um, but we have three coming up that are over 60 years old. So that's something. <laughs> Oh yeah, and so, in fact, uh, next week's is um wow. Next week's is ninety one years old. <laughs> That's crazy. Came out the same <laughs> year as Gunga Din. Yeah. Uh, I know this be, uh, be, uh, because my grandfather actually saw Gunga Din and uh, mm -hmm. uh, King Kong 
uh, as a double feature in the drive-in. So, um, uh, and I'll mention that next week too, but <laughs> I just remember the two together because he was, was always excited that he saw those two together. But, um, um, Tammy, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Oh, well, my name is Tannel and another one with my fiance, David, and we talk about movies and I, I have my own collection of them and I like hearing everybody else's opinion and checking out, like, for the most part, I like checking out movies I haven't seen. Sometimes I don't, I'm not, I don't always like them, but um, <laughs> for the most part, they're, it's interesting. Um, and, you know, um, now summer's coming, so I will be out and about with my car pretty soon. Okay. Um, and uh, my name is David Stregge. I'm one of the founding fathers of Inside Movies Galore, so thank you for following along on our film journeys here as we discuss each, each uh, films each week. I, I love covering all manner of, 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 of films, even though the, uh, this one, uh, I feel like I was, uh, I, I gave you guys a moment to have a good nap, but that's okay. Each film is uh, something different. So, um, uh, but I'm glad that I was able to uh, to cover this film on our channel. And hopefully you get a chance to check the film out and gain your own insights into uh, the, the film itself. I, I mean, it, it, it was interesting to learn that there was uh, uh, a print that was recently discovered. So uh, it will be interesting to see what comes out of that and whether I am alive when that print gets uh, out to the general public. So um that uh, that being said i am uh, planning uh i just over the last couple of weeks have been viewing the uh, the physical copies of uh, the anthology that i've been uh anthologies that i've been uh, filming for, uh, for the last two uh, two years and the first one we were able to get printed and i was looking over all the bonus features and it looks like we're going to have a release fairly soon so uh once i get uh once i get things in order i will set, uh, set uh, give a release date out to, uh, to th uh, those of you who are itching to watch the uh, uh, movie which we got down to a to be fair it's actually not a bad timing two hours and 50 minutes which is uh, which is a little less than most martin scorsese films so. <laughs> at least nowadays <laughs> So uh, that being said, um, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we'll see you next week here on Inside Movies Galore. Thank you for uh, listening, and uh, I'll, be, I'll be glad to uh, see you guys once again and uh, discuss another cool film. So Sounds thank good. you, uh, thank you for coming, and uh, I had a blast. So everyone, say. Uh, Huh? We we uh, you're on mute, but we did talk about next week's film already. Uh, your film is uh, we talked about King Kong being next week. Oh, I just thought you mentioned that there would be an old one. I didn't know you mentioned that it was next week. Yep, we mentioned that it was King Kong, uh, and, and I said that uh, my grandfather had watched King Kong as a double feature with Gunga Din. So. Well, yeah, I heard that. I just didn't realize that you had said it was for next week. Yep, it is for I next week. That part. <laughs> so. All righty. <laughs> everyone, say good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Actually, how do you say good night in Esperanto? Anyone know? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, if I can find that real, uh, real quick. <laughs> Good night. Translated.
Uh, Balma Noktan, I guess. Yeah. Bona yeah. <laughs> Bo- Bona Noctan. Yep. You're right. right. <laughs> so, right. Bona Noctan. Bona Noctan. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. 